Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Industry. In this video, we'll talk about third molar impaction classification related to maxillary third molar and mandibular third molar, the classification system that is used for both respective tooth. So let's just get started. Now classification of third molar impaction is different for mandible and maxilla. Not a big difference but slight differences between them. In mandible, the classification is based on angulation relationship of anterior border of ramus, which is known as Pell and Gregory's classification relationship to occlusal plane. For maxilla, the classification is based on angulation and according to impaction depth as compared to second molar. On the right hand side you can see maxilla with red we have drawn the third molar and in mandible also and you can see and how differently they are impacted so let's get into more detail about their impaction now according to angulation you can see mandible over here with blue we have drawn the second molar and with red we have the third molar now you can see how third molar has been placed mesially it is angled mesially as compared to second molar the Eruption sequence of mandibular third molar begins in a mesial direction and a mesial di in the mesial direction and it moves into a vertical direction. If insufficient space is present, it is impacted in a mesioangular position. The crown is tilted mesially or you can say it is angled mesially, therefore it is called as mesioangular impaction. It is the most common impaction of mandibular third molar. Uh, in the crown is tilted mesially and the removal of this is quite easy as compared to other angulations which we will discuss in a short while now here you can see second molar and third molar note how the third molar is present it is impacted horizontally the long axis of the third molar is perpendicular to the second molar respective long axis is basically if you divide the tooth like this, this is known as long axis and you can see how the long axis is perpendicular if you see it from second molar or third molar. Okay, now it is more difficult as compared to second molar. More difficult as compared to mesioangular impaction. because the way it is impacted in horizontal direction the removal pathway is a bit difficult as compared to mesioangular impaction now talking about vertical angulation in this case you can see the second molar and third molar now the long axis of third molar is parallel to the long axis of second molar as you can see with the dotted line they are parallel so this is called as vertical impaction it is the second most common type of mandibular third molar impaction second most common the first most common is mesioangular as we have discussed in before and the extraction pathway for this is relatively easy as compared to horizontal impaction uh, lastly talking about distoangular impaction in this case you can see how the crown is tilted in a distal direction as compared to the second molar it is the most difficult type of angulation to extract the tooth most difficult and I'll tell you why it is most difficult now you can see the crown is in is the crown is moved into the ramus now for this to extract the bone has to be removed in the rim and the, there is significant surgical intervention required therefore this two angular ang uh, impaction is the most difficult angulation to extract the tooth from now moving on to the second classification of mandibular third molar is relationship to anterior border of ramus this is known as Pell and Gregory's classification we can also call it PG now in this case you can see how the mesiodistal crown diameter of the third molar this mesiodistal diameter 
of the ground is completely anterior to the ramus. You can see this part which I'm drawing with green. This is the ramus and how the mesial distal diameter of third molar is and completely anterior to the ramus. It is not in the ramus, it's completely outside the ramus. So this is known as Pell and Gregory's classification number one. Okay, secondly, now you can see in this picture how the mesiodistal diameter of this third molar is not completely outside the ramus. Some part is in the ramus and some part is outside the ramus. You can see this part with green is in the ramus and this part with yellow, yellow is outside the ramus. So this is called as Pell and Gregory's classification number two because half of the third molar is outside the ramus and half of the third molar is inside the ramus. Lastly, now in this picture you can see the mesodistal diameter of the third molar crown is completely inside the ramus. It's not outside the ramus partially, it's completely inside the ramus. So this is called as Pell and Gregory's class three when you use anterior border uh, classification of Pell, which is Pell and Gregory's classification. Now talking about the third classification, classification system for mandibular third molar is relationship to occlusal plane. This is also known as Pell and Gregory's A, B, C. For anterior border we used Pell and Gregory's 1, 2, 3. For relationship to occlusal plane we used Pell and Gregory's A, B, C. Now what is this? In this case you can see mandible and the third molar's occlusal surface is present parallel to the second molar's occlusal plane. So the occlusal surface of third molar is present at the level of second molar's occlusal plane as you can see over here. So this is known as, known as Pell and Gregory's class A. You can also call it PGA. Uh, secondly, now you can see the mandible and now in this case you can see the third molar is present somewhat in between occlusal surface and cervical surface of the second molar. So the occlusal surface of third molar is present between the occlusal surface and the cervical surface of the second molar. If you see over here, the occlusal surface is present in between the occlusal surface of third molar is present in between the occlusal and cervical surface of second molar. So this is known as Pell and Gregory's class P, PGP, you can also call it that. Lastly, now you can see where the occlusal surface of the third molar is present. Now the, in this case, the occlusal surface of third molar is present below the cervical line of the second molar. So cervical line of molar is somewhat here and now you can see it is present below. So this is known as Pell and Gregory's class C, PGC. Lastly, talking about nature of overlying tissue classification of mandibular third molar. Now in this case you can see with this uh, green, this is the soft tissue and in this case you can see the height of contour of third molar. Height of contour is, is basically the uh, part of the crown that is bulkiest means that most of the crown. So in this case most of the crown is outside the alveolar bone and it is only overlined by the soft tissue. So this is known as soft tissue impaction because the third molar is only covered by the soft tissue and the crown is mostly out of the alveolar bone. It is only covered by the soft tissue which is uh, known as operculum. So in this case, this is called as soft tissue impaction of mandibular third molar. Secondly, now you can see in this case, the mandibular third molar is somewhat, half of it is in the um, ramus covered by bone and half of it outside the ramus covered by soft tissue. So in this case, it is not completely uh, present in the bone, but it is somewhat present in the bone and half of it is present in the soft tissue. So this is known as partial bony impaction because half of it is covered by bone and half of it is covered by the soft tissue. Now lastly, in this case you can see the third molar is completely inside the ramus, completely inside the bone of the ramus. 
and it is not covered by soft tissue it is only covered by bone completely surrounded by bone so this is known as complete bony impaction completely surrounded by bone no soft tissue at all now this was all about mandibular third molar impaction classification now moving on to maxillary third molar impaction classification firstly we'll talk about according to angulation classification in this case you can see the maxilla and with blue we have drawn the second molar and with red we have drawn the third molar in this case you can see that the third molar is present vertically the long axis of third molar which is this long axis is parallel to the long axis of the second molar so this is known as vertical impaction it is less complex to remove as compared to other angul angulations and it is the most common type of impaction when we are talking about maxillary third molar is the vertical impaction secondly talking about distal angular impaction in this case you can see how the crown of the man of the maxillary third molar is moved in a distal direction so when it's angled in a distal direction as compared to second molar it's known as distal angular impaction now in mandibular third molar impaction we talked that distal angular impaction is the most difficult type of uh, impaction and this is reversed when we are talking about maxillary third molar uh, impaction in this case it's the most easiest when we extract it also less complex when we are extracting it so this is distal angular impaction because the crown of third molar is tilted in a distal direction so calling it a distal angular impaction now lastly talking about mesoangular impaction in this case you can see how the crown of the ma maxillary third molar is tilted in a mesial direction so thereby giving it the name mesoangular impaction in mandibular third molar case we discussed that this is the most easiest to extract but this is reversed in maxilla in maxilla it is the most difficult to extract i'll tell you why the reason that it is the most difficult to extract <clears throat> because you can see here the bone on the posterior aspect of this tooth is thicker uh, so more bone has to be removed and there are also chances of breaking the maxillary tuberosity which is somewhere over here so it can also break and if it breaks the patient might have difficulties when maxillary prosthesis is inserted because it's a primary stress bearing area so these factors have to be kept in mind while extracting a mesoangular impaction of maxillary th a third molar so this is the most difficult to extract because the bone is thicker on the posterior aspect of the tooth lastly talking about maxillary third molar impaction according to depth of impaction as compared to second molar in this case you can see that the occlusal surface of third molar is present at the same level as occlusal surface of second molar so this is known as class a because the occlusal surface of third molar is at the same level as occlusal surface of second molar giving it the name class a in this case you can see the occlusal surface of the uh, maxillary third molar is present somewhere in between the cervical area of the mandibular third molar and occlusal surface of uh, sorry uh, second molar so the occlusal surface of the maxillary third molar is present in between cervical and occlusal surface of second molar so thereby giving it the name class b maxillary uh, third molar impaction now lastly you can see the occlusal surface of this maxillary third molar is present way below the cervical area of maxillary second molar you can see the difference the occlusal surface of third molar and cervical region of second molar the occlusal surface of third molar is present below the cervical region of the second molar so thereby giving it the name class c maxillary third molar impaction so this was all about maxillary and mandibular third molar impaction we hope that this video was useful for you 
and if you find this video helpful please like share and subscribe and we'll talk about the how maxillary and mandibular third molars are extracted their particular technique and much more details about it so stay tuned and thank you very much for watching this video